Hello, I am Kristen Dembrowski, and I would like to welcome you to Education 741 Improvement in Reading. This course will be fully online, and I will be your instructor. Um, a little bit about my employment history is that I have worked with nearly every grade level. Um, I spent the bulk of my uh, first decade in teaching in middle school, teaching everything from language arts and social studies to um, gifted and talented, and um, even I was a reading specialist for students with dyslexia. Then I've moved into the elementary world and I've worked as a special educator, a, um, a literacy coach, a special education literacy coach, and currently I am a an instructional coach, grades um, K through five, and I've also worked as an early childhood coach. So I've had myriad um, experiences, and they've I've been so lucky to have so many different windows into um, the student experience and the teaching experience and how everything kind of connects. So we have many learning outcomes for this course, but there are four that I really wanted to draw your attention to at the outset. First, we work really hard to make sure that by the end of this course, we are able to articulate what it means to be an effective teacher of reading. In fact, that will connect to an assignment that you will have your philosophy statement, where you will have a chance to expound on all of your very important beliefs and values when it comes to effective literacy instruction. Second, we want to demonstrate familiarity with examining students' literacy development. Development here is key. We're not honing in on what a second grader looks like or what a fifth grader looks like or what a tenth grader looks like, but we're looking at a developmental continuum and deciding where our students fall on that learning progression so that we are better, better able to do number three, scaffold students' reading and writing development. When we know where they are and where they're headed, we can scaffold them to the next steps on that progression or continuum. And number four, we want to facilitate students' comprehension through strategic readers and text factors. So that's where our textbook from Jennifer Saravello will really come into play because we'll be able to understand what different levels of text look like and we're, we'll ab we're able to meet students where they are in terms of their skills and demeanors. For the textbooks for this course, there's really only one you need to worry about right now. Um, I would love for you to purchase Jennifer Saravello's Understanding Texts and Readers or borrow it from a colleague. You may already own it. It may be something that's been sitting on your shelf that you've skimmed but haven't had a chance to deep dive into. And in this course, we will do a very close read of this book and I think it will quickly become one of your favorite resources. It's not too expensive either. I think it's under 30 bucks on Amazon right now and you'll be so glad you have it. The other main resource for this course is going to be streamed through our library system. So you don't need to worry about anything with access to these videos, but they come from Valerie Ellery's Creating Strategic Readers. She also has some wonderful texts that could go along with this series, but you're not required to purchase them. Uh, this will cover everything from primary grades to intermediate grades, foundational reading skills like phonics and decoding and fluency up through vocabulary and comprehension. So it really covers the gamut and gives you a lot of great video examples of practices and activities that you could take back to your classroom right away. We also have some other resources infused in this course. First, um, this oldie but a goodie article from Richard Allington called What I've Learned About Effective Reading Instruction from a Decade of Studying Exemplary Elementary Classroom Teachers. This article is designed around the six T's of teaching tasks, time, um, and then three more that I'm blanking on at the moment, but we will borrow that organizational structure to organize our philosophy statement as one of the final artifacts from this course. We're also going to read some excerpts from Lucy Calkins' new Units of Study Phonics, not because I am a strong, huge supporter of Lucy Calkins, or I know that not all of you are using Teachers College, but if you read her um, overview, there is a lot of great thought and research that goes into understanding what a solid 
dependable, reliable, valid units of study uh, phonics program would look like. And I think it would be a great practice for us to read that and really think about some of the important research that she shares around effective phonics instruction. We'll also look at the International Literacy Association and some articles that they have on teaching and assessing as well. If you've ever had a course with me before, you know I'm a huge fan of a writer's notebook. It really gives you a chance to diary and think about what, um, what you're learning and what you're thinking about. So you will be required to keep a writer's notebook for this course. However, you only are going to turn in weeks three and four, so I will never see the other weeks. Uh, there are four prompts that I would like for you to use to stir your thinking. First, what's something you already knew that was reinforced through this week's re resources? That's always a wonderful thing when you can pat yourself on the back and say, I already knew that. That's fantastic. I am a growing expert. That's our learning goal is for you to recognize that you are a growing expert. Second, something new I learned this week that made me feel excited or curious. As educators, we are attracted to this field because we are lifelong learners. And when we think we've reached the final stage of teaching, we've only just begun. So what's something that helped you learn and advance your practice this week? Third, what's something I encountered this week that connects to a former or current student? This is a really important component of being a reflective practitioner that you can connect the research you're reading about and anchor it to actual students, students you've had in the past or maybe one that's sitting in front of you right now. And lastly, something I encountered this week that I want to share with my colleagues. I want you to see that you are part of a professional learning community and that we can benefit each other by sharing and learning from one another. There will also be six discussion posts in Canvas. Um, I also do this in all of my other courses, so if you're not familiar, uh, you need to make one original post answering the prompt or prompts by Thursday at midnight, about 200 words, and I require APA formatting. So any resources that you reference need to be APA cited at the end of your post. Then that gives you the weekend to read what your colleagues have to say and learn from them and stir your thinking and go back and respond to two of them with 100 words minimum. And you only need to use APA citations if you're bringing in a new resource in your response. So those uh, re two responses are due to your colleagues by Sunday at midnight. Another core component of this class is you will be writing two professional growth plans, much like educator effectiveness, actually exactly like educator effectiveness if you've ever written an SLO. You will have so many ideas from this course that naturally you're going to start thinking of things that you want to bring back and um, improve or polish in your practice. We're going to turn two of those ideas into SMART goals and we're going to workshop them with our peers, and they may be something that you can or already have turned into your administrator to count for your educator effectiveness this year. So yay for double dipping! <laughs> As I already mentioned, one of your final projects will be to write a philosophy statement based on the organizational structure from Richard Allington's article. You will respond to um, what do you believe are the most important values or best practices around time, talk, teaching, testing, text, and tasks? This artifact is so important. It really helps you think about what matters to you and what are your goals in teaching literacy. You will also use this artifact for 740, the course in which you are learning to create your reading portfolio. We will also talk quite a bit about conferring, since that is the main point of Jennifer Saravello's um, Understanding Text and Readers book, and we will have an opportunity to either add to or begin your very first, uh, your very own conferring toolkit. So you can decide what works best for you and how you like to um, organize your conferring toolkits. I've seen everything in in my past working with teachers from a really big binder full of stuff to just a bucket of things that they need to carry around. I think it depends on your style and the grade level you're teaching and the materials that you need. But we will have a chance to build your current conferring toolkit or add to it and you will get to do a show and tell, which is a great segue into my next slide. Um, you will have two opportunities 
to do Flipgrid posts. If you've not done Flipgrid before, it's really easy. You don't need an account. You, I will give you a link. You will go to our Flipgrid page and you will create a video of yourself answering the prompt. Because this course does not have a face-to-face -face component and we are 100% online, I think this is a really important opportunity to see and hear from your colleagues. So you will have two Flipgrid posts. The first one is um, where I will ask you to please reflect on the differences between different running record protocols. We'll do a deep dive into several different types of protocols and you will get to explain in your professional opinion how they are similar and how they are different. The second Flipgrid post will be giving us a tour of your conferring binder or your toolkit. You can either share your favorite two or three resources or your entire contents if you're feeling especially talkative and ambitious. So that wraps up my introductory video. I'm sorry if it was a little long, but I'm just so excited because reading is my favorite. And I do think this is one of my favorite courses to teach because conferring and understanding the developmental continuum of reading is so incredibly important in being an effective literacy practitioner. And I love working for Stevens Point and being a part of your collegiate community because I get so much out of this experience. I get to watch you all learn and grow and I get to learn from what you're doing in your schools and in your practices and in your districts and it really benefits me as well. I get a lot of great um, ideas to bring back to my teaching practice. So thank you so much for being in this course and I'm really excited to talk about reading and get to know you more.